Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're doing another lead sound design uh, tutorial. This isn't a request, uh, I haven't been getting a lot of requests lately, um, but I am working on um, a recreation of Deep Jungle Walk um, by Asterix, um, which you might know from my other video, I talked about that. And um, today I want to show you my version of one of the main leads from that song. Um, I think it's uh, come out very, very nicely and it sounds very, very cool. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into that. Alright, so the project is nowhere near finished, so if I'm going to play you the reference, there are going to be a lot more lead sounds in there, um, which you kind of need to filter out mentally. Um, the only thing other than the lead sound that I have is the little vocal fill, um, which isn't perfect yet. Um, so I'll first play you the reference track, and um, it's up here. And then I'll kind of show you a little bit about this process and what's happening here and how I actually got out the lead um, a little bit clearer so I could listen to it a little bit better and then I'll actually go over the, the process of how I made it. Um, so this is the original if you don't know. So yeah, um, it's that main aggressive lead sound um, that we have there. And what I did uh, is I copied over that part of the track and I took one of the, the kick and basses that I have laying around. Um, I've done a lot of chopping and inverting um, with audio. So what I'll have here for these kind of remakes or where I want to remake a sound is I have a normal test track, uh, I call it, and then I have an inverted version where I usually have this on inverted. Uh, sometimes I don't because it uh, works out that the, the thing that I'm trying to, to isolate is already inverted. And if you know anything about like canceling and, and summing, um, you know how inverting the um, your track as in all the positive values become negative values and all the negative values become positive values and can kind of isolate things and maybe isolate the kick and bass. Um, in this case, that's what we have done. So we've isolated the kick and bass by just um, summing these two tracks together um, this one being an inverted version of the kick and bass. And then here we have um, the kick and bass with the lead sound, of course. And that together ends up with this. So now the kick and the bass isn't in the way of um, what I'm trying to do, which is trying to get the modulation as close as possible. Um, so that's kind of how I go about doing these remixes, trying to isolate it through cancelling, uh, trying to isolate individual sounds. If I have some other sounds that are more common in the track, like a kick and bass, um, I can use other parts of the track to isolate um, the lead sound here. Um, it doesn't work perfectly because, um, for example, in this version of the kick and bass, we also have, uh, because it's from the very first drop, we also have that vocal sound. Um, so if I turn this on. Um, so we also have that, that, that vocal sound that sits in the first drop. Um, so that's also going to be added to the original signal, um, making it a little bit harder. Um, but that's the best way I can think of, of just removing the kick and bass like that without adding it. There are other ways, like um, I believe there is something called Splitter right now, which is out. Um, but uh, those plugins tend to introduce a lot of artifacts when doing this. Um, so this is the best way to do that. Uh, but with that being said, let's actually listen to my recreation of it. And my recreation sounds like this. Um, I'm still not 100% happy with the actual vocal thing that I have going on here. Um, so you have me to excuse me for that. I'm still working on that. But the main focus is going to be the lead sound. Um, so this is what it sounds like. Okay, so that's the main uh, sound that I wanted to talk about. And the reason why I wanted to talk about the sound is that something interesting is happening with Asterix's sound design. Um, for one, we're going to ignore all the modulation that's going on here and mainly focus on the actual texture, the actual sound. Um, as you can see though, um, from the modulation, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on and Asterix tends to do a lot of micromanagement on this modulation. So for example, um, where a lot of people will just take a filter uh, cut off and kind of set up a shape like this where it just goes up for two bars and then down again for two bars or um, say it will be for four bars or they will have very 
um, long stretch out modulations. Astrax tends to do very short modulations. Um, as you can see here, we have the main modulation for the filter. And you can see that all kinds of stuff is happening. <coughs> we can also see that he is using a lot of panning in his automation, which I've tried to recreate. Um, obviously, this is not one-on-one, -on -one, um, as it's really hard to judge where exactly the panning is coming from. Um, we do also have the, the same panning here. And another thing I've done um, to get that, that more of a panning effect, and sometimes you have it and sometimes you don't, is using a stereo spread and then controlling the width as well. Uh, so sometimes the panning will be very far and sometimes the panning will just be uh, slightly left or slightly right. Uh, and that can also help making your sound a little bit more interesting uh, rather than just having it the, the stereo field static. You can like pan it left and right and maybe help it a little bit, make it just a bit more interesting than your standard ping pong delay on top of it. Because um, I believe that there is no delay on, on his version. And as you can see, I have delay and reverb turned off for this sound. Um, and that was purely because once I heard the sound in isolation, I realized that the, the left-right feeling wasn't really coming from the delay, but more from the, the panning he is doing on the actual source sound. Um, so I tried to recreate that as best as I could. Um, but the main thing is the, the actual sound here. So let's go through it. Um, it's a basic FM setup. So we have oscillator B with this wavetable, um, FMing oscillator A, and then we also have this noise going through the filter, um, which is providing the little cutoff. Um, what this noise is doing is it basically adding some, some randomness to it uh, before we go into things like distortion and um, into the, the chorus. And it also can make it a little bit brighter in some places. So I'll open up this fail to cut off in some places. As you can see, I'm automating it throughout the, the bottom line here. Um, this is the lowest line. As you can see, this is just uh, one clip and then duplicating it. Um, so it's not really that interesting. In, in some cases, it just helps making the sound a little bit brighter because you open up the filter cutoff, obviously. Um, so those two sounds then combine together into this filter, which is doing the bandpass. And again, a very basic setup, um, not really much interesting stuff going on. Um, it's using a bandpass 12 rather than a bandpass 24. Um, the, the sound sounds very open, so that's why I went with that bandpass 12 there. Uh, and again, um, what we're doing is it mainly involves um, modulating the cutoff in, in crazy ways to get cool sounds like, for example, that and stuff like this. Um, that's just purely having that happen. Um, having the, the filter cutoff do that and kind of almost following the pitches of the, the sounds here, which are also a little bit more interesting than just having it on one note. Um, it still has a bit of a melody to it. As you can see, this is the, the MIDI if you want to copy it. Um, there is some stuff going on. Some notes are a little bit weird, like there's this one note that's up one, um, providing a little bit of a glide. Um, but you can see that there is some kind of melody to it where it starts with this note and then it kind of goes down every other part here. Um, so yeah, this, the, the, the main thing here is basically the filter cutoff and um, uh, the, the noise thing that we're doing and making sure that those are doing interesting things and um, doing cool stuff rather than just having the, the, the simple setup which you would normally see. Um, but then it goes through the distortion and then it goes through something I didn't really see. Uh, as you can see, I was experimenting with the hyper and the dimension here uh, for the sound before. Um, but the sound had this weird texture where it, it doesn't really sound like a, a very sharp FM sound. Um, so to achieve that, what I did is I used the chorus. Um, you can see the only things I did here is open up the, 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 the filter and make sure that there wasn't any feedback. Uh, other than that, I don't think I changed a lot. Maybe I changed the depth here, um, but the delays are the same and I just speed up the rate a little bit. And um, I think the, the mix is always up when you, when you use it, but if it's not, then the mix is at 100%. So no dry signal comes through. Um, so that kind of smears out the sound a little bit and makes it less sharp, which is what I was after. Um, so that's everything that's happening in this serum. And then we have a serum FX that's basically just adding a little bit of distortion, a little bit of compression uh, to the sound. Again, um, I turned off the hyper dimension here for this one uh, because I didn't think it fitted the sound um, quite the way um, this chorus does. Um, the chorus really helps it smear out and um, I don't really like the way 
the hyper or the dimension FX does that same thing uh, because it's pitch wise and not time delay. Um, so it will sound a little bit more out of tune, which is not what I wanted. Um, then we have some, some simple mixing things. We have the, the EQ here, we have a balance and the width. So um, I set up this balance, first of all, which you can see is fairly extreme in some places. And um, rather than having to go through and edit all the, these automations because it was getting too wide, I just decided to add another utility and just turn the width down a little bit. Therefore, the, the whole effect of the, the balancing left and right kind of gets swashed a bit to the mono. Um, and therefore making it more stereo compatible. Uh, then we have some more stereo processing. We have the stereo spread here, making sure that it has a nice stereo field. And then finally the processor is making sure that um, the, the lower mids are a little bit more mono and the higher mids and the high end is a little bit more stereo. Um, so that just makes sure that the stereo field isn't just there, um, but it also has an, a nice shape and a nice feeling overall. And then we have uh, a final EQ here. So there isn't really much going on in terms of interesting sound design. Um, the, the most important part is making sure that all the automations are, are nicely managed. And this was the bulk of the, the setup. I believe it took me about three hours to get all of these modulations right uh, the way I wanted to. And you can see I still have two clips which are orange, which means that I'm not entirely happy with either the notes that it's playing or the modulation that it's doing. Um, so this is taking a long time to recreate, but um, if you just want to copy over a similar sound, what I would suggest is you spend a lot of time making sure that your modulation works well with the melody that you've set up. And you can see some of the tricks he uses is that, for example, um, he will often um, have very slow modulations on the notes that are the same. So for example, here and here. And then once the, the notes get a little bit more crazy in the melody, then you can see also the the automation itself gets a bit more crazy. So for example, there, you can see it here as well. And he will also sometimes just edit the, the, the melody a little bit and the automation to make it so that the, the notes get longer and they overlap. Um, I'm not quite sure where it is um, in this particular track. I think it's right here. Um, you can see we have this little overlapping note here, which adds a little bit of a glide. And it sounds like this. And in the original, it sounds like this. So those overlaps are there and um, you can find them throughout the track. Some are a little bit more obvious than others. Um, but those are some of the things you can do to recreate a synth like this. Um, I hope you find this thing interesting. Um, it's a little bit less, you know, actually making the sound and a little bit more talking, uh, talking about the theory. But I think if you apply this to your own sound design um, for your own lead sounds, um, that you can definitely improve your lead sounds there. Um, so yeah, leave, let me know if you like this video and if you want to see more about this project. If so, if you have certain things that you want to see, feel free to leave me a comment. Um, as you can see, the project itself is very much in its beginning phase. You can see this is the full track and um, I haven't really finished any se uh, section other than um, the very first drop, which is just the kick and bass and that one vocal line with some of the effects in there. And obviously I'm still working on it. Um, it's going to take a long, long time before this whole thing is finished. But once it's finished, I'm going to do a full project overview. I'm going to play the whole thing and you will be able to, to see it. And, and um, I'll talk about it a, a lot more. Um, so with that being said, that's going to be it for today. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit of a different video, um, but I think it's really interesting. Um, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe and um, if you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like. That really helps the channel. Um, if you have a suggestion for another sound you would like to see again, leave it in the comments or join my Discord server and ask me there. Um, but that's going to be it for today. Uh, bye bye.